The global women's basketball season is just around a week away. That means Jeff Walls and company are in the hunt to try to get back to the Final Four and inevitably get over the hump that is winning the national championship. On today's episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast, we're going to talk about breakout players, whether or not this team can be better than they were last year, and also what to expect from the newcomers. With that being said, let's get right on into the show. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, everyone? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On the Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Joining me today, my good friend, co-host of the Off the Walls Podcast, uh, um, a part of the State of Louisville Podcast Network, Brian Trent. Brian, how's it going, man? What's up, man? Thank you for having me. Oh, man. If only you all understood the audio issues that Brian and I have been <laughs> dealing with for the past 30 minutes on trying to get this. So, Brian, <laughs> seeing your voice match up to your lips moving, um, I'm, I'm glad to see it. But um, a lot of good stuff to talk about. There's no better person I'd rather have on the show to discuss the local women's basketball team than um, – in my opinion, the most influential media member that's covering Louisville women's basketball right now. Um, on the docket for Brian and I today, we're going to talk about whether or not this team can be better than the team last year. We'll talk about breakout candidates for the players returning and then also what to expect from the newcomers. So, Brian, let's start out with the question that I've kind of seen from social media over the past couple weeks or so. And, and honestly, I, I'm not a huge fan of these questions because – Every year, every team's different. Um, every team has different strengths. Um, look, losing Emily Ingsler and Kiana Smith and company, easier said than done than replacing. Um, I, I said it all last year. I thought that Emily Ingsler was the best defender in college basketball. Granted, the team added um, a solid recruiting class. Also, Morgan Jones, uh, Chris Lynn Carr, uh, Josie Williams, so on and so forth. In your opinion, you know, from where things are right now, a week out from the first game against, I believe it's Cincinnati. Is that the yep. first game? Cincinnati. How are you feeling about um, you know the current state of the team? Is this a roster that you feel like can be better than the team that made it to the Final Four last year? I think this is the best team we've had to, since 2018. And so that's I high praise. I don't think it's close. And uh, is that like is that sort of? I know you're a big fan of Morgan Jones, which yes. a lot of people a lot when of people you, should be. When you add a two time first team All ACC player. Uh, All American honorable mention um, at Media Day during Jeff Walls's presser, he said uh, she reminds him of Angel McCautry. Um, yes, you have to be a big fan of Morgan Jones. It, it's kind of like last year, um, you know, uh, a running punchline that I used a lot was the only regret that Lowell fans have about Emily Inksler is that she wasn't a Cardinal sooner. And it, and it definitely could also apply to Morgan Jones and, and how that um, and how that relationship would go with her level of play on the court. Um, you know, when you look at the depth of this team, obviously Haley Van Lith back. Um, you have Olivia Cochran, a handful of players that made some big time uh, some big time efforts last year. Um, how do you feel about the depth? coming off the bench this year compared to where it was last year? Because last year it felt like you had, like, I don't know, three to four players you could really trust. Granted, you're not playing all 15 players or how many players you have on your bench. I'm, I forget the scholarship limit. How do you feel about the depth for this year? I think it's um, head and shoulders above last year. Um, I mean, you're going to have Peyton come off the bench again, but she's going to be far better than last year. Uh, she'll be competing with Haley as the best shooter on our team. Uh, you have Nyla Harris coming off the bench, the freshman, and she's going to be a very, very high impact player, uh, probably greater than anybody off the bench was last year. And then, of course, you still have Mikasa Robinson, the heart and soul of this team, coming off the bench because uh, CC, Crystal, and Carl probably start at point guard. Mm -hmm. Um you still have Norika Kono coming off the bench. Uh, I think Marissa Russell, I think she's uh, kind of – I think she's advanced a little bit. I think she'll play a lot more solid minutes. 
I mean, you still have Liv, Liz Dixon coming off the bench and Coach Wallace saying she's going to have a breakout year this year. So I think this year's bench far exceeds last year's bench. Uh, I I tend to agree with that statement because although it's somewhat unproven, um, a lot of these players are going to be incoming freshmen as well. Um, how do you see the role of like Narika Kono this year? It seems like last year um, things were, you know, the, the table was being set for her to have a, a huge season or at least a solid, you know, maybe a, a sixth player of the year in the ACC, possibly in my opinion, at least coming into the year. Um, now, you know, I know that she dealt with the health issues and things of that nature for her this year being in Jeff Wall's system for, um, what is this her fourth year now? Yeah, she's the same. Is this the fourth year of Narika Kono? Yeah. Um, I mean, are we overlooking her to the point to where it's like, okay, we, we talk about all of this guard play. And then when we talk about players off the bench, a lot of times it's Mikasa Robinson and, um, you know, maybe Liz Dixon or, or Josie Williams, why do you think the majority of the fan base, maybe I'm not saying you are, but why do you think the majority of the fan base kind of is overlooking Norika Kono right now? Well, I think Norika is a very solid player. Um, I think she gets overshadowed by more highly touted players because, I mm -hmm. mean, you're going to have Makas on the bench. Uh, Zion Walker came in as a freshman, um, and she's a very, very high, high IQ player. Um, point guard, which we'll get into later on. <laughs> I don't want to skip ahead on you. Um, no, you're good. You're good. <clears throat> um, and I mean, you still got Haley, you got CC, you got it's a very, very loaded one through three. Mm -hmm. Um, Narika is a very solid player. I just she's really good, she's just not quite at the level that some of the others are um mm -hmm. i think and that uh, makes sense i mean that's I think she will give us a really really solid minutes as long as she stays healthy all year she's somebody that you can depend on that's going to keep the mm -hmm. floor there's she's going to keep everybody together right if she's out there um i just don't think she's gonna get the minutes most people expect her to get by her senior year and that's fair. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, it's it's hard when you ha are playing behind, you know, two all ACC level players and then Haley Van Lith as well. So I get that. Um, this year, uh, seemingly, you know, South Carolina is probably the overwhelming favorite as they were last year um, with the team that they have coming back. Uh, Louisville currently ranked sixth. Uh, I'm sorry, seventh, just behind UConn. UConn uh, notably lost Paige Beckers in early August to an ACL tear, I believe. So you would assume that that is the end of her season before it even starts. Uh, so, you know, this season, am I wrong to feel like I, – I, I get it. Look, Brian, it's hard to get to the Final Four. But with the team we'll that be in we the have – What's that? We'll be in the Final Four. That's that's kind of where I'm coming to. Is it Final Four or bust Yes. this year for the team? This Yes. This but, is his best team since the last team that should have that had a national championship one the referees t stole from us. If the referees don't steal soon. this one from us, we have, the size, we have the ability. We have Haley Van Lith and Morgan Jones. Um, Josie Williams is the game changer for us. We can match up with South Carolina. Um, it's national. I. It's this is our national championship year. I think. Yeah, and then that's that's I think that that is a very very big endorsement, um, considering that um, you know this losing Emily Inksler is tough, losing Keanu Smith is tough. That's an a thousand point score right there, and then you you have a veteran Morgan presence. Jones right now is what Emily Inksler was at the end of the year last year. That, but that yeah, that's where I, that's where I was going to is you have Morgan Jones kind of filling into that role as well. So Brian, for this team, and before we go into the next segment, uh, one more question before. For this team to be better than last year's team, what needs to happen? Is there a certain aspect of the game that needs to be focused on? Are there certain players that need to make sure they take the next step? What what would ensure that this year's team is better than last's? Josie Williams and Liz Dixon has to keep it from Olivia Cocker and have to play the five. 
they have to keep her at the four. Mm -hmm. Let her rotate with Nyla to keep Morgan Jones at the three and Haley at the two and CC at the one. Interesting. You have to have your two bigs. The post has to do their job. Right. You have to have Josie and Liz be able to play at a high enough level that you don't have to put Olivia back there to where her and Nyla can rotate at the four to where you can stay big enough to where you can compete with South Carolina and Stanford and NC State and everybody else. That's one thing is Louisville needed size. They went to the transfer portal and got Josie Williams from the West Coast. We'll talk about Josie in the third segment, I believe. We'll talk about the breakout players that are returning um, for this upcoming season here in just a second after we talk about our friends over at Bet Online. Look, BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all of the latest player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering info with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet Online, where the game starts. So moving right on along into the second segment with my good friend, uh, co-host of Off the Walls podcast, Brian Trent. Brian, the players returning. Uh, from last season that could, you know, fill into this uh, possible breakout candidate role. Look, there's not many options because there were some players that transferred out. Um, you do have players like, uh, you know, like Mikasa, if you wanted to, Marissa Russell, um, Verholst, you know, so on and so forth. Who's your number one candidate to go to for the breakout player role? Liz Dixon. Okay. Liz Dixon, because we have to have that. I think she's going to have a career year this year backing up Josie Williams. <clears throat> now, is that let, – let's kind of um, classify that a little bit into what that looks like on the court. When you talk about breakout, because when you look at what Liz Dixon did last year, um, she had some solid games but only averaged about five, five and three respectively – um average under a block a game is it more of a statistical jump because look i mean it, it's easier said than done to see a huge statistical jump when it's such a balanced team i think it's going to be more solid minutes on the court defensive and offensive wise i think i think her offensive numbers are higher. i think her points per game are going to be higher I, I i would i'd put her probably closer to eight or nine points a game this year um her re uh, her rebounding has to get better. I think it. I think that's going to skyrocket. I think she's going to be close to a double digit rebounder this year when she's in. Okay. Um, I think her defense is the main thing. I think she's going to have a breakout season on defense. She did it a couple of games last year. She did it against Alyssa Kunain. That that was the marquee game. For is her. she finally gone? Yeah. About time, bro. <laughs> It but seems was, like Kunane was there for every bit of 23 years. Yeah. I mean, that was Liz goodness. Dixon's like marquee game last year on the I defensive remember. end. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what you're going to see more every game from her. I think uh, I talked to her at media day and uh, she's locked in. Uh, her and Joe's have been working a lot together. And uh, yeah, I think you're going to see uh, a season from Liz Dixon for sure. I'm going to go with Peyton Verholst. Um, I think that's probably the most um, popular choice. Verholst had some – what's that? <laughs> that's why I didn't go with her. Yeah, Peyton, uh, I, I think this, this one is pretty self-explanatory. Um, average three points and two rebounds, respectively, per game last mm -hmm. season. Um, started to pick it up more uh, towards the end of ACC play, but a true freshman that didn't get a ton of significant game-by-game -game nightly um, action – um, I, I think that, you know, it, it's one of those classic cases for Jeff Walls to where a five-star player comes in, kind of struggles year one, then year two, three, and four, they're continuing their upward trajectory. I definitely think uh, Verholst is going to be a solid, uh, you know, first player off the bench for Jeff Walls, in my opinion, or maybe even second. 
Um, I think that it fits her, you know, maybe running the uh, second unit offense uh, with one of Chris Lynn Carr or Haley Van Lith or Morgan Jones or maybe even two of the three, depending on the rotational sets. Um, but I do think that um, Verholst, if that shot continues to come around, you know, Jeff Walls, I think the one thing that kind of stuck out to me when he talked about Peyton over and over is that she doesn't do one thing extremely great that stands out beyond the others. It's it's she does everything good that it, it just kind of all levels of the game. So I, I'm interested to see how statistically she will be able to improve this year. I don't think it's going to be far fetched to say that she could average around seven to eight points per game. Uh, Peyton is neck and neck with Haley as the best shooter on the team. Peyton might, I, be, the best. I, I Peyton see might be the best three-point shooter on the team. It's her, Haley. I'm not sure which one. But if if Peyton gets in a rhythm, she's the best three-point shooter on the team, easily. And that's that's something that I feel like this team needs because you look at what the team has right now. You have Haley Shore. You have Chris Lynn Carr, who showed uh, at Syracuse that she can knock down the deep ball. But uh, Morgan Jones, more so of a mid-range player, uh, which is okay, but but that's kind of her bread-and-butter offense, the interior and the mid-range. You lose Kiana Smith, which her perimeter shooting, um, that's a big loss. Now you have Peyton Verhol stepping up, and it's going to be a matter of multiple players kind of stepping up and filling that role, in my opinion, of just yeah. being a better perimeter three-point shooting team. Because it, once you have that, I think you can really unlock – the potential offensively for players like Van Lith and Morgan Jones because you allow them their space to operate in the mid-range, which they love to do so much. I think Peyton has stepped in the role that Keanu Smith left. Uh, that's going to be Peyton's role. The mm -hmm. knockdown shooter, uh, I mean, good dribbler, good, decent on the dribble drive and stuff, but mostly just a knockdown shooter. Uh, that's the role Peyton will feel for this team and that's perfectly fine uh but admittedly the main segment that i want to focus on or the longest one i should say is what to expect from the newcomers there are a lot of them we'll talk about each one here in just a second before we do that i want to say thank you all once again for making locked on the wall your first lesson of the day just a reminder the show is free on all streaming services including youtube and now whas 11 plus which you can go to whas11.com, scroll down to the sports section, find the show on that platform and watch them all. Also, take this time to give a shout-out to the Off the Walls podcast, hosted by Brian Trent and Alex White. Um, just got um, Angel McCautry and Asia Durr on their podcast. Um, so I'm not sure who's left. Um, <laughs> I don't know who else you can get at this point. But man, uh, all the all the great guests. So there's no better place to find women's basketball coverage than that show. But moving on, Brian, uh, into this segment, uh, what to expect from the newcomers? You talked about being a big fan of Morgan Jones. Is this you know uh, I I'm expecting first team All ACC. Uh, Morgan Jones is the best player on our team. Okay, and I don't I don't think it's Haley's the only one who could challenge her. But I think Morgan Jones is the best all around player on this team. I remember when she committed, and I'm like, Jeff Walls got who? Yeah. Because I was uh, like, well, you we mean the Morgan Jones was... that dropped 30 on us in like back-to-back -back years? That yeah. Morgan Jones? Yeah, it sucks she picked four State over us, but <laughs> hey, <laughs> it happened. <laughs> hey. Okay, she's here now. That's all that yeah. matters. But, um, yeah, I definitely think all ACC level play, um, all ACC first team is what I'm expecting, honestly, for both her and Haley. Um, Me too. And, uh, and I don't. I think it's very obtainable as well. Um, I think but, Josie Williams can get it. It depends on our game with Virginia Tech and how she plays against Elizabeth, Elizabeth Kitley. Uh, yeah, and, either and, she'll and be of, first team and uh -huh. Elizabeth Kitley be second team, or Elizabeth Kitley be first team and Josie Williams be second. The team. issue is Kitley is being referred to as like the All ACC preseason Player of the Year to a lot Morgan of people. Jones gonna be Player of the Year. Okay, very high praise from Brian Trent on October thirty first, Halloween. <laughs> so, uh, but um, Josie Williams, it's a perfect segue. Uh, last year, transferred from um, Utah Valley U State. Utah Valley State, yeah, seventeen point three points per game, twelve point four rebounds, uh, average just over a block per game, fifty five percent from the field. Do you think she's a starter this season? Yes. Yeah, you do. And now, is this a thing? Because, like, look, it's hard to project what her statistics are going to look like because she came from a mid major program, and that's kind of hard to to look at 
I'm telling you, I, I think she's a double-digit scorer. I, I like what I've seen from her on film. Um, I like the fact that she's 6'5", and as mobile as she is, will she average 10 rebounds? Possibly, um, because there's only so many rebounds to go go around, and Morgan Jones is a fantastic rebounder, and then you have Haley, who's not a bad rebounder for her size. So um, you, you mentioned all ACC-level play for her. Um, I think you'll see Josie's points drop from what she did at Utah Valley State because she doesn't have to do that here. Uh, they're, the other players are good enough that she don't have to score 17 a game. Haley don't have to score 17 a game. Morgan don't have to score 17 a game. Let them all just they score fight. 10 points a game. Have nine players score 10 points a game. Then we're set. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think double-digit rebounds for sure. Josie will get – I think she'll average 10 or 11 rebounds a game. Um, I mean – I would probably put her at maybe eleven or twelve points a game, mm-hmm. uh, maybe thirteen. I think I she'll gotcha. be. I think she'll be a double digit scorer. I think she'll be a double digit scorer. Morgan will be a double digit scorer, and Haley will be a double digit scorer. Um, Olivia, I think, will knock on the door. Um, Crystal and Carr coming in. Uh, I think she'll start at point guard. I think our starting lineup will be uh, Crystal and Carr, Haley, Morgan Jones, Olivia, and Josie. I think, I'm, I think that's going to be our Probably starting lineup next Monday. Out. Now, what about Crystal and uh, Carr, Brian? Because, I mean, you look at what she's done at previous <clears throat> stops in, in the Power Five. I mean, she came out right away and averaged 18 points per game as a true freshman back at Texas Tech. Um, then she was averaged, Big 12 uh, freshman of the year. Yeah. I mean, then then the, the average kind of dipped a little bit in the 2020-21 season, only played five games, transferred to Syracuse where she averaged 14 points. Um, it was a solid point guard as well. A uh, good on-ball defender, shot the ball 44% from the field, 37 from behind the arc. Um, I look at this as kind of like a Chelsea Hall 2.0. But faster. Yeah. Uh, and, and, well, Chelsea Hall, wasn't Chelsea like, was she like 5'8 or 5'9? How tall was Chelsea? She was 5'8, I think. Because I know Chrislin is a little smaller, kind of like a, what, 5'5? She is five, Diamond Johnson. Maybe? What Diamond Johnson did to us to make us lose that NC State game is what um, Chris and Carr can stop. The rest Good. of our team couldn't stop because that last Diamond year. Johnson is still on that team. Yes, our our team couldn't stop that last year. No, Chris and Carr all. can stop that. And that's Nobody actually, on our team was fast enough to stop that last year. Chris and Carr. I'm actually can. really, really glad that you said that because that game is one that I really try to forget. Because I saw what was happening from a mile away, <laughs> yes. and NC State uh, took the lead. I'm like, okay, whatever. Yeah, nobody on our team was fast enough to stop that last year. Crystal and Carr is. Now moving over to the true freshman, um, you obviously have given high praise to Nyla Harris. Yeah, um, she's going to be a very high impact player this year. Are there any other true freshmen uh, out of uh, Ziana Walker? You also have uh, Jalen Brown. Nyla Harris, obviously, and Amani Lester. Uh, outside of Harris, do you see any of those other three being uh, rotational pieces, or are they more so redshirt candidates? Uh, Amani told me she's going to medically redshirt this year, so she's not going to play. Okay. She told me that at media day. Okay, uh, so there, there's that. Diana Walker is a very, very high IQ point guard that I think is going to see a lot of minutes. Okay. Uh, she's going to – I think she can – she can back – Chris and Carr up very well. She's she's going to be a very high impact freshman, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jalen Brown, uh, she's more of a project. Uh, if she doesn't redshirt, I think she'll see. I think our backcourt's deep enough that she could redshirt if Jeff Wall. It's hard won. to project the back end of the rotation too, because I mean you we look. I I, I think if you asked. 100 people what the starting lineup would be probably about 90 of them would say what you said and the only <clears throat> differentiating would be maybe replacing Liz Dixon with Josie Williams that would that probably be replacing Chris and Carl with Mikasa Robinson yeah that's also true uh but that goes to show you is that you have legitimate options off the bench at guard you have Casa you have Narika Kono um you have Peyton Verholst three returners so there's only so many minutes to go around yeah I so think I get that. What about what about another one? The best thing to do would be to uh, redshirt Jalen Brown. Mm-hmm. And 
And there's yeah. there's no shame in that. I mean, it just kind of speaks to the depth of this team. What about Alexia Mobley, though? She's going to be battling injury to start the season out, probably what, hurt, missing, a, uh, missing a Cole month. Cole said she, I think she'll be back by conference play. Okay, so conference. early, early January, maybe mid December. What about her role? Because she she reclassifies. Yes, and red joins shirt the life. program in red shirts, which I love yes. that decision. What's the expectation for her? You know, being in uh, in athletic, what six two? Is she a like a stretch four? She's a wing. She's is the same she play, as Morgan Jones. Plays more of the wing. Okay. Yeah. Um. No, uh, I say that because it's an era, have, uh, positional. She basketball. would have been my um highest impact returning player instead of Had Liz she, Dixon, not she wasn't hurt. Gotcha. So at the end of the day, maybe that's just another solid addition. Yes. When conference play rolls around. Her, I watched her in practice last year at Media Day when she's redshirted and she was on the scout team with the managers and she probably had thirteen blocks. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Uh she's a very high IQ um offensive and defensive player. She can shoot three very well. She has a very quick jump on the defensive end. Um, she doesn't get fooled by ball fakes. Uh, she's she's a really she's a coach's kid and a really high IQ basketball player on both ends of the floor. Very high praise from my man B. Trent Bryan. Always appreciate having you on. Before um, I let you get out of here, uh, do me a favor. Uh, do everyone else a favor because I already know where to find you on social media. Tell everyone else where to find you on social media, where they can find your work, and any pat, any parting thoughts. So you can find me on Twitter at, at @btrent underscore otw. Uh, you can get me on Instagram at Off the Walls Podcast. Uh, you can find the Off the Walls Podcast on Apple po- on Apple Podcast and Spotify. Uh, my only parting thoughts are: um, Morgan Jones is still the best player on our team. That's <laughs> I'm gonna, I will hammer that I to everyone. I think you're under contract to say that. Brian, Brian signed a contract. He's like, I have to say this five times. That <laughs> everyone should know Morgan Jones' name because you're going to know it by the end of the year. And this team is going to win Jeff Walls' first national championship. Okay. I hope you are right because I'm tired of seeing us coming up short. And, I, and this yeah. should be Jeff Walls' second national championship. It wasn't for the referees who screwed them at the end of the 2018 Final Four because soon? we would have destroyed Notre Dame again and Too we would have crushed Muffet McGraw because I hate Too her. Soon? Too soon. <laughs> Too soon, Brian. <laughs> I'm sitting there giving you a bunch of hand gestures to the stop. No, I had to, I had to do it. You're not wrong. Still too soon. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that this team is going to be better than the team last year. Um, you know, whether or not they'll get as far as last year's team, it's obviously um, something that only time will tell. But appreciate Brian have, having the time to jump on the show. Like I said, the season starts a week from today when the Cardinals take on the Cincinnati Bearcats, 5 o'clock Eastern time on November 7th. Um, Coached by I, Michelle Clark Hurd who was an assistant for Jeff Walls for his first five years at Louisville. There you go. Brian Trent dropping the tidbits on the Locked on Louisville podcast. Uh, just a reminder, the show is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team every day. Off the Walls podcast, no better place to get your women's basketball talk than that show. But that's going to wrap up this Monday Halloween edition of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here very 